Let us go before the Lord. Father, we bless you and thank you so much because you're worthy to be praised. And Father, no matter what goes on, your promise still stands and great is your faithfulness, not ours, great is your faithfulness. We can only do the best that we can with the knowledge we have. But today I ask you, Father, to increase our faith through the knowledge of your word. Show us down that through history, Father, you've been with us and you've done things, Father, that only those who understand who you are can praise your name. But, Lord, we want to increase that number today, and so we ask that you use us to your glory. And, Father, I'm praying that everyone under the sound of my voice will yield themselves to such a task, that they would yield to you, that you would be able to use them. And the glory will still all be yours and not ours. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, here we are, Yom Teruah. We can call it a shout, feast of trumpets. We just want to kind of look at it today. But there's three things I want y'all to kind of focus on today because I'm just going to kind of go down the scriptures and show you what it's represented because no matter what happens, no matter what rituals you keep religiously, if you don't internalize what it is and live it out, it's of no use to you. Because somebody today is going to follow all of the traditions, but still have, but still be empty. Oh, yeah, y'all hear that? Somebody's going to follow all of the rituals, but they're still going to be empty. But then someone who understands what the principles are and internalize them and live by them, they're going to get the joy of what it means to have the Moedim, the appointed times. And believe it or not, as we've been taught for many years, that these Moedims are for us to rehearse our Messiah. So at the end of the day, it's really about him, right? It's really about him. So let's go to, uh, let's go to the Torah principle that that speaks of this, where God initiated this. And let's go to Leviticus 23, and let's start at, um, let's start at verse uh, 23. Yeah, yeah, let's go there. I really want to, today, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit, but right here, in the Lord, it says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, next verse, it says, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial. Now, y'all remember that word, memorial, okay? A memorial of the blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. So today is a holy convocation for us. It, and a convocation is it's no more than the fact that we recognize the day and we come together. Now, think about it. Let's just put it in real, regular terms so we all can get it, and that's important. Because when we say holy convocation, what are we saying? We're saying that this, this assembly today is set apart. That's all. Ain't nobody going to be perfect today. Ain't nobody going to dot every I and cross every T. But I will say this. It doesn't say you can't try. Do your best to give it all you can. But at the end of the day, he said, be holy for I am holy. He's saying, be set apart from all other gods. You know, we're going to have to realize, we know and we say that there's only one God, but not everybody believes that. So he said it way back then. He said, be holy, for I am holy. I'm set apart from all other gods. Think about it when you're looking at the scriptures. Make sure you try to understand it in the very time and place, culture, language that it was given so when he said be holy for i am holy that's because there was a whole other people other than israel that had their own gods they may be self-proclaimed they may have been carved out of wood out of stone they may have been an animal whatever it was he was saying to them be holy as and as is a very powerful little word because as means 
to the same degree. As I am holy, to the same degree you be holy. Set yourself apart for me because I've been set apart from all other gods. So this day is set apart. And see, the ritual is come together. But the true application is to set this day apart as the Feast of Trumpets and put it in your heart. And today, make it a day set apart for God. Amen? Y'all agree with that? Amen. Okay. So he goes on to say a uh, holy convocation. And just give me 25. You know, finish it right there. And ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So, no work today, because it's a Sabbath, right? Doesn't mean we don't work to serve one another. Doesn't, work, doesn't mean we don't do good deeds. It just means that today, we're not going to make no profit. That's what it comes down to, all right? Because a lot of people have written down through the years what's to be considered work. And Jesus came along and debunked all that stuff and said, you know what, you don't put more pressure on the people than it was supposed to be. It's really simple, y'all. Don't work for yourself to make a profit for your own pocket today. But please, if you see someone in need, and you got to roll up your sleeve and work for them, then work for them and help them and get them to where they need to be. Amen? That's not work. Amen. That's actually keeping the day holy, set apart for God. Why do I say that? What did Jesus say? What you've done to the least of my little ones, you've done it unto me. So whatever we do in the service of someone else today, even if you break a sweat and get dirty, the day was still set apart for God because you did something to one of his creation. And we're going to see about the remembrance as we talk a little bit more. So according to Mishnah, the trumpet used for this purpose, or uh, the ram's horn, as we heard beautifully, my brother blowing that thing today, but it gave me chills, you know. Charles has really has gotten into that thing. He's blowing it, and we appreciate it. Thank you, Charles. So, but it's used um, for, to start the beginning of the feast, of, of the festival. So you blow it to alert the people, hey, this is the beginning. So it's, it's starting it off. Also, it was used to muster the troops, okay? And then it was to warn of danger and to assemble the people in the midst of battles. And the last one, it was for coronations, for when we crown the kings. And um, a, a particular, uh, it's called the, the Genesis, the Genesis Hebrew lexicon states that the word teruah, is an awakening blast. So today, I want you to think about three particular things. I want you to think about awake, repent, and remember. Amen? Those are three focus words for us today. Awake, repent, and remember. Awake, you sleepers from your sleep, and you who slumber, Arise, examine your deeds, repent, and remember your creator. Those of you who forget the truth in the vanities of the times that you dwell in all the year, in the vanities of emptiness, look into your souls, improve your ways and actions, and let each of you forsake your evil path and the thoughts which are no good. That's what today is about. To, for you to be awakened and every and that's exactly what's happening today is we're stuck in the vanities of this time everything we think that man has done that is so great that we just indulge in overindulge in and get all into it and forget all about the creator this is a day when the blast blows for us to remember these things so let's take a look at it I believe Paul was drawn to that. Um, can I have Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14? We're not going to be long because we want to get together 
and celebrate, right, and love upon one another, you know. So he said uh, in Ephesians 5, start at 14. I guess we'll do 14 through 17, okay? And I'm going to show you how this was so deeply ingrained, and you'll see it in the teachings. See, the whole point of us learning Torah is when you study the Torah to learn the the commandments as they were given, and we call them, of course, what they truly are, teaching and instructions. When you see it, then when you start to read the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, you will begin to see it, that it's sti they were still carrying on the same thing. So when they, took, uh, they, when they started to develop religion, and uh, we split away from our roots, and we developed uh, what we call today traditional Christianity, these ideas began to weaken. And it's caused a problem for us today because now we can't focus on the, the actual blueprint. And so we're looking at the cake, which is the, uh, what we call the Tanakh. And then the icing on the cake is actually the Brit Hadashah, when the Messiah came. But the teachings are still the same. And they're still rooted and grounded in these things that the Lord said do. So let's look at Paul. He says, wherefore ye for say, for saith, awake thou sleepest. Look at that. He goes right to it. And he's talking to what? A group of people who were not necessarily Hebrew. Right? He says, Awake thou that sleepeth and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. It's all tied together. Right? It's more than likely that this was drawn from an ancient temple prayer that I just read to you. That was an ancient temple prayer. And it was given on Yom Teruah. And the teachings of Messiah, they give us light. So he's telling them, arise, awake thou that sleepest. That's still a word for us today. We need to awaken and arise because the giant is the church and it's asleep. And part of the things that's going on is a result of us being somewhat sleepy, right? Look at the next verse. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. He's telling them, you got to walk circumspectly, right? Let me, um, let me pull something here. I like it better from here. 14. And uh, just give me the last one, and then I'll cover it again. 15 says, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Should we be, huh? No, uh-uh, stay there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to recover it. I'm going to read it again from here. You ain't got to move it. I want, that to show, I want you to see redeeming the time because the days are evil. That's what's happening to us today. Are you redeeming your time from the vanities of this current time? Because if you think about what you're doing on a regular basis, then we're in the same situation as these Ephesians were back then. We're in it now. Same situation, right? But look what it says here out of Dr. Stern's translation, which I do love. He says, uh, get up, sleeper. Arise from the dead, and the Messiah will shine on you. See, now, King James said he'll give you light, but this is a better translation to me because it's helping you to understand there's something you have to do in order for Messiah to shine on you. Amen? Y'all with me? Because it's important. If we're, not, if we're caught up in the vanities of this current time that are rolling into evil, then what, how can the Messiah shine on you so that things can happen in your presence and you be used. He says he'll shine on you. And verse 15 says, therefore, pay careful attention to how you conduct your life. Now, King James said, walk circumspectly. Well, you're going to have to look that up because that's a big five cent word that's really just saying, be careful, take, pay careful attention, attention to how you conduct your life. That's just as true now as it was then. Live wisely, not unwisely. 16 says, use your time well, 
for these days are evil. Now, how are we going to combat what is going on today if we don't use our time wisely towards the knowledge of God's word and then put it into practice? Amen? Y'all look quiet. Are you with me? It's very serious because this is, we, we're saying, oh, we're in the last days. Okay, well, what are you going to do about that? Are you going to continue to live in the vanities of this current time? Because it's going in a different direction now. And it's just as it was prophesied. Amen? All right. Look at this. Get up, you sleeper. Arise from the dead. The Messiah will shine on you. Paul is borrowing the terminology, the sons of children of light. And this is being actually borrowed from the Essenes, and the early Messianic believers that sang hymns at the dawn of praise to the, to the Lord, the sons of righteousness. These very verses may be those to which they used at that time. So Paul is using this, the Apostle Paul is using this to say, Listen, pay attention to what you're doing. Pay attention to your time. There's probably some grandparents here that find that your grandchildren today can be preoccupied with this thing right here. Because they, they know how to handle it. I mean, they still in diapers and know how to hit this thing. But let me tell you a little something about this technology. Because it's visual and the colors and all that, and if we got any tech folks in here, you understand. This stimulates a portion of the brain that releases endorphins, and it becomes addictive. Technology, all right? Everybody got one. And most of the time when I get home, I got two. I got a phone for work, so I, I can't wait to take them off and put them down somewhere. But even I have to admit that sometimes when the thing bleaks, you, you go look at it. So how much more are the children? When they get engrossed in that, then guess what happens, grandparents, when you come to visit them? They're not going to sit on your lap and enjoy you. They're going to sit on your lap and give you a hug for a minute. And then they're going to be squirming to get out of your lap so they can go get back to their program. But what is that doing? What are we supposed to do when we have our children in our presence? We're supposed to lay hands on them and bless them and talk to them and all of that. And so we're losing a human connection. And we wonder why it's no big deal when somebody gets splattered on the street or gunned down. It's reducing our sensitivities. Oh, man. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So he said these are evil days. The same technology on the games are the same technologies that police officers and soldiers use to train. You know, because when you, got, because when you look at that game technology, you clearly are looking from the viewpoint of the person. So you see the gun in the hands, and ba -da -da -da, ba -da -da -da, and they are training on how to kill. The same technology is being used for military and everything. It's a simulator. And guess what? They get good at it. So when some of these... Uh, young people get a AR-15 and they've been playing them games, they are better trained than the police. And you want me to prove that? Why didn't those police rush in there? These kids armed with the uh, AR-15 is better accurate than the police. I ain't going in there. But, uh, but other children were being killed. And they took a job to defend and serve, right? But they wouldn't go in there. They still ain't found out why they hesitated. I can tell you why they hesitated. 
Maybe they're going up against somebody who's better at this than they are. See, we ain't thinking how this is all, yes, this is all tied in. The days are evil. So we have to watch what our kids are handling because they are working it. And it's to the point where you take it away from the two-year-old and they get upset. Okay. All right. Well, Pastor, you could use them. Yeah, you could. The question is, are you? Are you, uh, are you pulling up things of God on there and letting them look at it? The, que uh, the question, yeah, it'll work both ways, but the question is, are you doing that? Amen. So look at this. Psalm 51 and verse 9. Listen. I ain't throwing no rocks in anybody. I'm telling you, this is the time we in. This is the times we are in, and all of us is going to be subject to this if we're not careful. Because this is telling us to be awakened and know that the days are evil, and how are we spending our time? Amen? This is a day when we become awakened. And we're saying, because I'm going to talk about repentance in a minute, we talks about hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. This is a day that when we are awakened, and I said we become awake, we repent, and we remember. So we're asking God now, hide your face from what's happened this year that I've involved myself in. Amen? Isaiah. So the blast of the shofar is symbolic of the coming of the Messiah who destroyed the bondage of our past. Can I have Ezekiel 29 and start at verse 2? When the blast comes, it's to remember the Messiah is coming. Amen? He's coming. Ezekiel 29, 2 and 3. Okay. Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt. You're saying, what does that have to do with it? Look at the next verse. Speak and say, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon, that lieth in the midst of the rivers, which have said, my river is mine own. I have made it for myself. This particular verse is showing us that the bondage of Egypt, the Lord prophesied against what he would do to Egypt. For his people were enslaved in Egypt, and he, the dragon, the, uh, the dragon, is known as, and, and, it, and it translates to a sea monster. Let me read it from here. It says, um, I am against you, Pharaoh. I'm against you, Pharaoh of Egypt, you big crocodile. So he was like a sea monster, and he, was, he said, I own the Nile. I owned it. But he was one, and no one could cross it. No one could get around it. He was the great crocodile. And if you've ever seen Nile crocodiles, you ever seen any of the animal shows, it's huge. But he was saying, I own this and all that's in it. I own your people. You know, the world is saying that today. We own the church. Oh, yeah. They're saying it. They're saying it. Taxes. What you can say. What you can't say. All they have to do now is pass a law that says you can't preach that because Everything is coming in a different direction. Children about you have to be concerned about which bathroom they're going to use, how all these things work together. And basically, if you preach about it and speak what the word of God says, and they pass a law, 
that says you can't say that, now they're going to be coming after you. That's that big crocodile. I own you. So we're going to have to prepare because the, the persecution just was speaking the truth. We're not against anybody. We love everybody, but we have a responsibility to speak the truth in love, don't we? Don't we? So that's happening, and that's coming. And just as they was persecuted in Egypt, that's going to be the same. The blast is for us to remember what God did to the big crocodile that allowed us to be free. Amen? So it speaks to the bondage that we were in. And it let us know that God is going to still be with us. It's not going to be easy, guys. It is not going to be easy. And it's not for you to be afraid, but it's to, for you to know that these things are upon us right now. Amen? Yom Teru. I'm still talking about the blast. So let's move. I'll move into this because I want to make sure we kind of cover all of this. So the coronation, the shofar, announces the crowning of a king. And at the beginning of a king's reign, it is customary to sound the trumpet. So when we sound the trumpet on this day, it's also for us to remember that we have a crowned king. And that king is returning, is he not? And also repentance. It, it ushers in the 10 days of awe. That's our next, we have to move into the 10 days of awe where we do now what? Examine ourselves prior to Yom Kippur. This is a time now for us to settle all differences and to get ourselves right with each other before Yom Kippur. So it announces that. So this is a time of repentance, right? Whosoever, whosoever wishes to repent, let him repent. Listen carefully. If not, let him have remorse later. You can repent now or you're going to have remorse later. You're going to be so sorry that you didn't do what you could have done. And later, and this actually is the way of kings. First, the king warns the people through decrees. God has warned us by putting his decrees in place. And he is our king, is he not? So he has warned us, and he's put those decrees out there to warn us. And then he puts the decrees out for the people. And whosoever transgresses, he has no complaint when the wrath of God comes upon you. You know, that's why I try to help understand that when he returns, there's not going to be a whole lot of dealings. You ever wonder why it says judgment starts in the house of God? Because he's going to handle us according to what we were supposed to learn and do. To those who rejected him, that's not even going to be an issue. There's no, there's no real discussion in that. You have no complaint. You already know where you're going. It ain't going to be long. That's just my opinion. I'm not putting out a doctrine, but that's the way I read it because he already knows. He said, I'm going to separate the sheep from the goats, right? He said, my sheep know my voice, and another they won't follow. So that means it's not going to be a whole lot of discussion for the goats. I've already put this out for you. I put my servants in the earth, and for us to do our job to put it out, then it was up to them. Amen? So that tells us something else. Why fight and argue with people about the truth? Put it out there. Don't, don't be a terrorist trying to make people believe because this is the way of the king. The way of the king is I put my decrees in the land and I let you know what it is. You can repent now or have remorse later or you can choose not to and there will be no discussion when it's time. You know, what you, you know where you're going. Amen? Amen. So we don't do that. We don't want to argue with people. We want to be able to just put out the truth in love and let them know that you love them, and that's why you're telling them, but there's going to be some rejection. They're going to, some people are going to reject it because it's written right here. So don't be surprised at that. So repentance comes. Look at uh, Revelation. The revelation of Sinai is also in this blast. When the blast, when the shofar blows, the blast commemorates the Sinai and anticipates the Messianic era. When the Lord recomes and we talk about the Messianic era, that's what you're also to remember when you hear the blast. 
Can I have Isaiah 27, 13? It's called the great trumpet. Isaiah 27, 13. Let's look at this great trumpet. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria, and the outcasts in the land of Egypt, and shall worship the Lord in the holy mountain at Jerusalem. So this is also, and I'll talk about it a little bit more later, but this is also, that blowing of the shofar also brings the dispersed of the people of God from the four corners, right? So these are the things. Remember I said, awake, repent, and remember. Remember what this blast is all about today. Warnings. This is the other part that we got to remember in the blast when you hear the shofar. The watchman blew the shofar to warn the people of impending danger. Can I have Ezekiel 33, 4, and, and verse 4? Well, I tell you what, give me, start at verse 1, because we'll, we'll just read through, through 7. And this tells us again what to remember. Remember what I said, awake, repent, repent, and remember. That's what this day, that's a focus for us on this day. Yeah, that's right. All right, again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman. So he's saying, set up watchmen. We're watchmen. All right, conceptually, that's what we're doing. Number three, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. What's our job? Warn the people. So now translate the concept of the trumpet, that, the blast that we hear to our voices because the also part of teruah also means a shout. So it's vocalizing the fact that we, when we put out the word of God to those who will hear it, it's a warning. Right? Next verse. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and what's the trumpet now? It's us, right? We're the trumpet, right? And taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. What did I say? Didn't I just read to you that he said, the king puts decrees out there, you accept them or you don't. When the time comes, it's all on you. You can't blame anybody. Our job is to be the trumpet. Next verse. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. Right? He didn't, it doesn't say fight with him. It doesn't say argue with him. It doesn't say get into family squabbles and separate. It doesn't say anything about that. It says give him a warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his own soul. Remember a couple of weeks ago I said, our focus is to ask God to show us who's a seeker, who's looking for the truth, and put your focus there. Doesn't mean stop sounding the trumpet, but focus on, be sensitive to the people who you can get a hold of and sit down with them and show them this truth. Amen? Discipleship, right? So it's all tied in. Next verse. But he that... But, but if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet. Now, this is on us, right? Do we not see the sword coming through the land? Come on, y'all. Y'all too tired for me right now. Do we not see the sword coming through the land? And the people, uh, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned. If the sword come, and take any person from among them, from among them. That means in the midst, right? People within your sphere of influence where you could be doing the, the right job. He said, and take away any person from among them. He is taken away in his iniquity, but the blood will I require at the watchman's hand. I don't know about you, but I have no desire 
to stand before God and give an account for what I didn't do in blowing the trumpet. That's something to think about. So the thing about now you understand, now you can apply the scripture, judgment starts in the house of God. Now you know why, because he's already said it. We are the trumpet. So on this day, we remember to be a trumpet. You hear the blast, it's to remind you of your vocalizing and teaching and spreading the word and doing whatever you can to get as many souls as you can. All right? Verse 7, give me, give me the last 7. So thou, son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. What are we? We are watchmen. Don't, don't, I know you say it like you mean it. <laughs> we, we are watchmen, are we not? We are watchmen, right? Therefore, thou shalt hear the word of my mouth and warn them from me. We are too quiet as the body of Messiah. And, it's be, and listen, not to fault anybody, I ain't throwing no religious rocks at you or anything, but understand it is natural as a human being to not feel rejection. That is natural. Nobody wants to be the outcast among any group of people. But he's saying to you, first and foremost, that's why we got to have more time together so we can bond and know that I'm not alone in this situation and wherever I am, whether I'm at work, whether I'm walking, what are we supposed to do? When we walk by the, by the way, when we rise up, when we lie down, that we have the words of truth in our mouths. And don't waste your time not speaking it. That's tied to the first set of verses. Live wisely, Paul said, because the days are evil. And you are a watchman and you have a job to do. Amen? Pastor told us that all the time. We got a job to do, right? So, the warning. The temple and the, the prophets invoked the shofar's battle cry as the repeated warning of the impending destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. Constantly they told them, something's going to happen if we don't do what God say. Something's going to happen. And then if you internalize it more, per, uh, more personally and look at your own individual families, if you are not sounding the trumpet in your own household, amongst your own people, because remember he said the people among you. So again, go back to what are you doing with your time? Amen? Jeremiah, look at this, look at this, uh, this well, I'm going to skip that one, but for your, for your notes, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 4, 19 through 21 talked about the sounding of the shofar from the prophet before the destruction of the temple. The other thing is fear, I want, and I don't want to use, I, they, they use the term fear, but I want to make sure you understand. God does not have a desire for you to fear him as in afraid. And although the Bible says when, when they heard the blast at Sinai, they heard his voice sounded like thunderings and lightning, the people shook because they were afraid. But Moses wasn't afraid, was he? Because he was used to hearing his voice. So Moses was able to take it. All of us are supposed to get ourselves in a manner in which we can hear the voice of God and not be afraid. Many times you saw in the Bible when an angel or something appeared, First thing that happened, the, the people were afraid. But once they got used to it, it was okay. So get used to hearing the voice of God that you are not afraid of it. Because what father wants his children to be afraid of them? But what he's really talking about here is reverential fear. Now, I, I was not afraid of my father, but I was afraid of my father. You know what I'm saying? I, I respected him, and that's what he wants from us. Respect who he is. Amen? Oh, you put it up there. Well, let's read it since you put it up there. My bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace. You know, I, Jeremiah was called a weeping prophet, right? Because thou hast heard, O oh my soul, the sound of the trumpet. 
See, they warn them, the alarm, the alarm of war, destruction upon destruction is cried, for the whole land is spoiled. And suddenly are my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? He was saying, how long is this going to happen? The temple's being destroyed, the sound of war. So to remember that the blowing of the shofar is also a sound of war. Are we at war? Okay. All right. Thank you, since you put it up there. All right. So the trumpet inspires the fear and reverence of Yah. And that is the conviction of God that exists, that we know he exists, and he punishes the wicked and rewards those who follow his instructions. Amen? Judgment, the day of the Lord. A day of wrath, a day of gloom and alarm. Can I have Zephaniah 1, verse 15 and through 17? All of these we should remember when we hear the blast on this day. This feast day is connected to so much. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 15 through 17. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of the clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as dung. Look at that. That's what's going to happen to those who don't. So the trumpet also represents that judgment. Let me see Romans 14.10. And see, it's not just them, but also God is letting us know nobody's going to get away. Everybody has to give an account. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set a naught at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So that's telling us, stop bickering amongst ourselves. Stop judging each other. Get yourself focused on you. Use your time wisely and get yourself in order with God and stop looking at your brother. Whatever you can do for them, Help them to get in line because, again, that watchman, that concept still stands in the house of God. It's not on the outside because keep this in mind. The scriptures is written to us. That's our book. It's not the sinner's book. It's our book. So it starts with us. So we don't judge each other. We need to get away from that. Amen. Find common ground and have what they used to have, which was midrushing, and have a discussion where you can see things rightly and not, well, I ain't dealing with them because they don't know what they're doing. Well, that's rough. We shouldn't do that. Because if you've gotten much knowledge and teaching, then you're required at a greater level to help others understand and not to become a person that's just cutting everybody up. That's all ser serving the same Lord. That's not the way we do it. That's not the way to do it. And he's saying, you're going to be judged for that. Amen? What good is it to learn all that we've learned and we don't have the heart and humbleness to share it in a way that causes people to be drawn to it? Amen? That's, that's a problem. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.10. And I'm going to talk about now he goes into the, the very seats he was talking about. So we, we're not judging each other. Not con and judgment means do not condemn. It doesn't mean that you can't speak to a brother and sister privately, privately, and straighten out issues that they may be doing something that's not consistent with the word of God. That way we gain each other. Nobody wants to be put on blast. Amen? You embarrass somebody, you're going to lose them right away. All right? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to 
that he have done, whether it be good or bad, all of us. Your work going to stand before him. My work's going to stand before him. Everybody's work is going to stand before him. And the righteous judge, no matter how well you thought you had it right, he's going to tell you whether or not your deeds was right or wrong. Amen? Give me uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. We'll get these last two in and we'll, co we'll close it up. So what did I say we're going to do today? Awake, repent, and remember. All right? That's what we want to do. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Next verse. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Each one of us, the foundation is laid, that's Messiah. We build on that and nothing else. Amen? There's a lot of stuff out there now today that could lead people in different directions. But we want to stay on the foundation that was laid for us. Amen? So that covers judgment. Now there's the end gathering. This day when you hear the blast. So in a nutshell, when we're dealing with judgment, understand that the heavenly court will be open at that last blast. Amen? The end gathering to remember our faith in the future end gathering of the Israel's dispersed and awaking people that are yearning for it. Right now, if we're sounding the trumpet, and particularly what the things we have been blessed to learn about this perspective that we continue to sound the trumpet, that those that are dispersed and have never heard these truths will hear it and begin to yearn for it. And then we can teach them. Amen? We want that. So let's go to Matthew 24, 31. And I got one last piece will be the resurrection. And then, yeah, go to Matthew 24, 31. The coming of the Messiah. When the Messiah comes... There's going to be an end gathering. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. You hear that? Great sound of the trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now, that's red letter when you see King James. That's, that's Messiah speaking. And he says, hey, when that, last, when that trumpet blows, there's going to be an end gathering. Amen? Because there are those that are seeking him. Right? And that's the ones we're looking for. Malachi 3, 16. See, the work we do is going to be remembered. So that's where your reward is. So again, use your time wisely. If you're not focused on the kingdom work, and the kingdom work can go on while you're at work, while you're socializing, that kingdom work can go on. Use the time wisely. Then they that feared the Lord spake often to one another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord, and that thought upon his name. we thinking upon the Lord. We're talking to one another. We're engaging. We're helping, uh, as the men say, iron sharpen iron. We're working together. We're always talking about the things of God when we come together, rejoicing in that helping one another, it's being recorded. So this is a day of remembrance. When the blast blows, you will be remembered for those things because God is saying, I heard you talking about me. I heard you sharing the good news. I heard you trying to teach a person who was in a dilemma and show them my word and show them how they can get out of it. And so I remember that. And on that blast, you will be remembered. Amen. So that's part of the end gathering. The resurrection. While the final shofar is blown, not only will the end gathering of the exiles, but also the dead, those who lay in the earth, will also hear the sound and rise. That's called divine remembrance. Isaiah 18, 3. And we'll close with 1 Thessalonians. 
the ones always talked about at funerals, but let's go to Isaiah first, 18.3, and then we're good. Amen. I pray this has been good for you because all of these things, you can look it over, but it's so much more to this day, so much more to this day. I have an entire book that's on this day alone and teachings that come out of it. All the inhabitants of the world and dwellers of the earth, see ye when he lifteth up and a sign on the mountains, and when he bloweth a trumpet, hear ye. There it is. Now, go to 1 Thessalonians, and we'll close with this. 1 Thessalonians 4.16. We all know this one. This is what the apostle Paul was alluding to. Why? He was a rabbi. He understood all of this. He knew exactly what these feast days was all about. There's so much teaching attached to the feast days for us to know what we're supposed to be doing. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. Remember, shout is also teruah, right? With a shout and with the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, we preach that at the funerals, right? We always say that the dead in Christ shall rise first. But you see, it's all attached that's why we have a feast of trumpets, because that shofar has great meaning. Amen? So what are we going to do today? Awake, repent, remember. Amen? God bless you all. God bless you.